Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to go on a bit of a different direction. Uh, I want to talk about the Zen of miniature painting, the relaxation, the meditative state that you can achieve through putting acrylic paint on tiny little soldiers. So, uh, let's get into it. Um, there's a lot of very uh, relaxation oriented uh, things that it, reasons that people do miniature painting or at least as a component to it and you know it, you want to have yourself like a nice quiet isolated space a lot of the time where you don't have a lot of outside stimulus you can kind of check out mentally from the world around you just focus on the thing you're doing maybe listen to a podcast some music TV show in the background, whatever, while you're doing it. But the main thing is you want to be able to focus on what you're working on and just chill. Um, it has, you know, a lot of repetitive motion as well going on with this that kind of helps you focus in on it. And um, the thing that I want to talk about really is how Miniature painting actually has a lot of similar characteristics to meditation, which I know is just a really odd, random sort of thing to be talking about. Um, but I just thought this was a cool topic when it popped into my head the other day. Well, actually, it was probably a couple of weeks ago now, and I've just been uh, having issues getting time together to actually just like have my head in the right place and sit down and record something. Uh, tried a couple times and got interrupted a couple times. So, but here we are today. We're making it happen. All right. So, just a note kind of off the top. Um, I'm by no means like an expert on like meditation and relaxation techniques or anything like that. Um, I did. I've done some research on it in the past. I've done some amount of practice of this kind of stuff. Um, you know, did like a, a formal research paper on meditation in college about like the, the actual like physiological sorts of effects and things like that. Uh, and some of the practices, but I mean, first of all, that was like 20 years ago. And second of all, I mean, that was like undergrad level, college course in an elective area that had nothing to do with my major that I was just taking for fun. So, um, and it wasn't even really the point of the course. It was kind of just an open research paper in an Eastern philosophy class. So, yeah. So take that for what you will. Um, this is just me kind of spitballing some ideas and uh, backed up by a little bit of research. But, uh, I mean, anything recent is really just kind of Googling around for some stuff to make sure that I was on the right track. So, um, if you think this is interesting and you want to learn more, uh, I encourage you to go look for stuff. Don't necessarily take my word for anything because I am not an expert. I am just a guy sharing some ideas because I thought it was cool and fun. So with that said, um, what is meditation anyway? Um, now, I think it's something that kind of conjures up a couple of different potential images in people's heads. Um, you know, like the, the, like Tibetan monks men meditating off in like a monastery and just staying in one position for hours and hours and hours chanting and stuff like that. Um, that's sort of one thing that like dedicate your life to meditation. Um, and then, you know, you have the other stuff that's like the, you know, the, the hippie chick with like gross white girl dreads that. It, her name is like star seed or some shit that's uh talking about your chakras and uh um maybe she's fun to uh hang out with a little bit but um she's otherwise crazy and uh you're not sure if she's meditating or just maybe kind of taking a nap anyway um those are kind of like extreme versions of things there's a lot of different kinds of meditation and there's a lot of things that really fall into that category that are not what you would typically think of as being meditation. Um, things like uh, prayer is often a, uh, a common form of meditation. Um, a, for example, like uh, prayer ropes, rosary beads, like praying the rosary are, are common 
uh, religious prayer types of meditations. Um, you know, frequently there's a focus on an object, a mantra, an idea, um, you know, it, something. Um, meditation is really just focusing your attention onto an idea, an object, something, and really kind of trying to focus all of your attention in on that and push out all of these other sorts of things in life, whether it's thoughts in your head, ideas, whatever is going on around you. It's the, the, the point is kind of focus. And um, one of the things that I think people get wrong a lot about meditation uh, and get intimidated by it is that they think they have to like empty their brain of all thought to meditate. And really, it's like the practice of meditation that leads you to be able to push stuff out of your head um, and get more into that um, clear mental space. Um, that that kind of clear-minded thing is really more the result of meditation and not the prerequisite. That's um, it's also not something that you want to try to just empty all thought out of your head. Like that's another one of those things. It's just like a common misconception of how meditation is supposed to work. The, the point is really focusing on one thing and pushing out everything else that's extraneous rather than just having an empty brain. Um, that's not the idea at all. So you can achieve this a lot through reducing stimuli in your environment and you can, uh, you know, get rid of external sound or distracting sound. You need to be comfortable, um, not too comfortable. You don't want to fall asleep. Um, you know, it, and have that thing that you want to focus on to, um, bring your mind to that sort of attention. And now when I'm kind of going through these things, you can start seeing right away that there's a lot of similarities between, miniature painting and meditation and how you can use uh, miniature painting for a sort of meditative practice, which is, uh, I think is personally really kind of cool. Uh, so let's talk about the actual benefits of meditation, because this is something that I really have done some like actual academic research on a while ago. Anyway, um, this is, a lot of meditation is also really similar to um, biofeedback, which is a form of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, actually, not cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, behavioral therapy. Um, and it's something that I've personally done with um, a doctor on many occasions uh, for treating migraine. Um, you know, there's a lot of clinical research that has been done associated with meditation. Um, it, you can, it's fairly easy to just hook somebody's brain up to, uh, you know, an EEG or fMRI while doing some sort of meditation and see what's going on in their brain and measure all sorts of other physiological things that are going on to see what's actually happening in your body. And then measuring that over a period of time to see what the effects are of it overall. Um, there's a lot of cardiovascular associated benefits. Um, there's a lot of uh, controlled breathing and um, along with that relaxation and controlled heart rate and doing all of those sorts of things reduce uh, your overall stress level. They reduce blood pressure, anxiety, depression, pain. A lot of things are really interconnected and, associate, uh, and associated with that. So there's a tremendous benefit to you physically from doing this as well as mentally. Um, if you have high blood pressure, if you have mental health problems, if you have uh, insomnia, if you have uh, PTSD or drug addiction, even uh, there's a, a whole host of different things that uh, can be uh, positively impacted through meditative practices. And as we'll see on the next slide, that there's such similarity between miniature painting and um, 
meditation that I think you really can, if you focus on it in that sort of way, you can make it a meditative practice and actually reap some health benefits from it. I mean, I haven't sat down and actually like done a study on this. Um, I would imagine there's been studies into painting in general and art therapy in general um, for those sorts of benefits. But uh, those are things that uh, I know have been looked into and there's definitely benefits for. So miniature painting in particular, just being kind of like a smaller subset of that um, and also intersecting with the whole meditation thing, I think uh, could probably really bring some decent health benefits to people, even if it's just a matter of reducing anxiety and depression and just finding some calm and peace in your life. Um, those are things that more and more I am looking for myself. And I think it's, um, it, this finding that sort of peaceful meditative state has been something that has, um, I think improved my life a lot considerably. And also like on the flip side, like taking that more like focused, relaxed, meditative sort of approach to painting, I believe is making me better at miniature painting too. Um, so uh, it's, it's interesting. It, it, it's just such a weird little, uh, corner of miniature painting that I kind of have run into with this. So let's just look at, you know, the similarities between these two things, right? You want to have something that you are intently focusing on miniature painting. You're painting your models. Um, meditation, it can basically be anything, um, but you want that that point of attention to draw your focus to and kind of push everything else away. You need kind of a, a quiet, alone kind of place to do this, where you're going to get rid of your external stimuli. Um, there's a lot of repetitive behaviors in miniature painting. Uh, you know, just simply like the brush strokes and dipping your brush in the paint and cleaning your brush and all of those sorts of things, very ritualistic sort of behaviors that also translate to being very much like uh, things in meditation practices. Um, controlled breathing is another interesting one that um, I think breath control while you're painting miniatures can actually help your control of the brush a lot as well. So um, having those kind of controlled breathing practices and uh, being conscious of your breathing is something that can certainly improve your miniature painting. And if you can couple that into sort of, um, you know, breathing exercises that, um, you know, are used in different meditative practices, then uh, you may be able to get some additional benefits there as well. So, I mean, you're really checking a lot of the boxes here. Um, there's not much of a difference, I don't think, between sitting in, sitting on the floor with your legs crossed and, um, you know, chanting a mantra or, or focusing on a candle and sitting comfortably at a desk and focusing on painting a miniature um there's there's just so much of the same idea of focusing your attention getting rid of that external stimuli beating all of those extraneous thoughts out of your head that are distracting you and invading your mental space so that you have better control of yourself and your focus you relax, you find some peace in your life. And I think that is just so, so valuable. Um, I really encourage people to uh, try and tackle miniature painting in this way. And, you know, the last thing that I really want to do is encourage people to just go out and try this. This is along the same lines of the just the intentional practice um, that helps you improve at miniature painting, having certain things where you're controlling your environment and controlling your practice in a way 
that can be more like meditation can bring you, I think, some benefits to your life. I think it's uh, something certainly worth trying and it ain't going to hurt you. Right. So having a controlled environment is a, a, a great way to start having just a, a way, a time and a place where you're not going to have those distractions or you're at least going to have minimal distractions. Um, be prepared. Uh, have, you know, your desk, your paint set up, ready to go so that you don't have to have as much. Uh, preparation time, there's less of a barrier between you and what you're doing. Make sure you're comfortable, have, you know, comfortable temperature in the room, don't have weird noises, um, you know, have a comfortable chair, it just get, it, make sure you're also mindful of your posture and things like that so that you're um, not causing yourself pain and discomfort. And the big thing with all of this is that it takes patience, it takes practice and time, and your progress with the meditative side of this is going to be slow, just like it is in your progress in painting is going to be slow. You'll get some uh, little jumps here and there and some some plateaus, and it, you just need to remember that progress takes time, and, you know... You're not going to just have no thoughts in your head right away. In fact, the goal is not really ever to have no thoughts in your head. It's to just kind of have one. And in this case, you want that one to be painting whatever model it is that you're working on. So, you know, and along those lines, just being mindful of it being okay that distractions happen, that other things are going to pop into your head and that, you know, maybe your phone will go off or something. But I think what I've been finding is that if I put my phone out of reach um, and just have, you know, a podcast on in the background, have music on in the background, whatever, um, it really improves that whole distraction thing. And you know, maybe even th there's just a lot of benefits of putting your phone down for a while in general. And this is a really good excuse to do that. So uh, unplug for a while. I know I just deleted Twitter um, and I am consciously using Facebook less. Um, you know, that stuff's kind of bad for you. And sitting down and being quiet and painting a miniature in a nice relaxing space is something that I think um, can actually be really good for you in a lot of different ways. So guys, more mellow, more, I don't know, philosophical than my usual content, but um, you know, I, I hope this is helpful to some people or at least cool, interesting, whatever. Maybe you just killed 20 minutes of your time. Uh, or maybe you were just listening to this and uh, got some miniatures painted. I don't know. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. I'll talk to you all later.